The story of Duncan McPherson reads like a script from a Hollywood thriller. A pro hockey player, possibly recruited by the CIA, suddenly vanishes into thin air. However, this isn't fiction. In August 1989, while snowboarding in Europe, Duncan McPherson disappeared without a trace. Despite relentless search efforts, it took 14 long years before his remains were finally discovered. And this is when the story goes from mysterious to truly horrifying. In this video, we're going to revisit the life of Duncan McPherson and the events that led up to his tragic end. Was this just a horrible accident gone wrong, or had he been the victim of something sinister? Let's dive in. Known for his upbeat demeanor, Duncan McPherson held a deep-seated passion for hockey from an early age. Unlike his peers, who shared his love for the sport, McPherson stood out with his robust defensive play and impressive skill set. As he matured, his abilities only grew, earning him the nickname McPherson as a nod to his striking presence on the ice. Eventually, McPherson's talents led him to pursue a career in professional hockey. At 17 years old, McPherson joined his hometown junior team, the Saskatoon Blades, in the WHL. He showcased impressive skills during his junior career, accumulating 119 points in 189 games, alongside 353 penalty minutes. This performance caught the attention of professional scouts, leading to his selection as the 20th overall pick by the New York Islanders in the 1984 NHL Draft. McPherson transitioned to the professional level in 1986, joining the Islanders AHL affiliate in Springfield. However, his time in Springfield was plagued by frequent injuries, limiting his playing time significantly. Suffering injuries to both knees and a torn rotator cuff shortly after joining the team, McPherson found himself released from the team by the end of the 1988 season, unemployed and without a contract. Suffering career-ending injuries at the young age of 23 left McPherson feeling anxious about his future. Without a college degree, he realized he needed to explore opportunities in European hockey leagues if he hoped to continue playing. Shortly after reaching out to European leagues, Ron Dixon, the owner of a British hockey league team called the Tayside Tigers, based in Dundee, Scotland, expressed interest in hiring him as the team's head coach and part-time player. Despite some skepticism about Dixon's legitimacy, McPherson agreed to meet him in person to discuss the terms and sign a contract. In the meantime, he casually mentioned to his parents and a few friends that the CIA had made attempts to recruit him. Whether this claim was a joke or if there was any truth to it remains unclear, but it sparked numerous conspiracy theories among the public in the years to come. McPherson was set to meet up with Dixon on August 12, 1989. Prior to this, on August 9, 1989, he left Fussen, Germany, using a vehicle borrowed from his friend and former teammate teammate George Passowit. McPherson informed Passowit that he planned to spend a day or two snowboarding at a ski resort in Austria before meeting Dixon. With a long-standing interest in snowboarding, McPherson saw this as an opportunity to enjoy the slopes and test his skills. He traveled to the Stubai Alps on August 9, 1989, where he spoke with a man named Walter, an employee at the popular ski resort. Duncan informed Walter of his intentions to snowboard on the mountain that day. Tragically, this marked the last confirmed sighting of McPherson alive. Despite the foggy weather that day, which prompted most skiers and snowboarders to stay off the mountain, McPherson remained undeterred from hitting the slopes. However, when he failed to appear for his scheduled meeting with Dixon on August 12, 1989, Dixon became concerned and contacted Duncan's family to inquire about his whereabouts. Sensing that something was wrong, McPherson's parents immediately sprang into action to locate their son. The challenges they faced were compounded by their lack of knowledge regarding Duncan's exact whereabouts, and their efforts were further hampered by the limited assistance offered by the Austrian police. Authorities reasoned that as a grown man in Europe, McPherson had the autonomy to alter his plans without informing anyone 
complicating the search efforts. Six weeks later, the McPhersons traveled to the Stubai Alps in pursuit of Duncan after discovering that he had borrowed Pesowitz's car. Upon arrival, they found the car parked in the resort parking lot, containing most of Duncan's belongings, including his passport and personal items. Subsequently, Austrian authorities initiated an extensive search effort for Duncan. Despite their concerted efforts, neither the police nor the McPherson family uncovered any clues regarding Duncan's whereabouts. Over the course of the next 14 years, the McPhersons made nine trips to the Alps in hopes of finding Duncan or any indication of what may have transpired. Unfortunately, their endeavors yielded no success. However, everything took a dramatic turn in 2003 when an employee at the Stubai Glacier Resort made a startling discovery. While surveying the snow-covered mountain glacier, the employee noticed a glove sticking out from the ice. Initially mistaking it for discarded debris, the employee attempted to retrieve the glove, only to uncover McPherson's frozen body. Alerting the authorities immediately, they were confronted with the sight of the 23-year-old preserved beneath the snow by the frozen ice. Remarkably, McPherson's attire remained intact as did the contents of his jacket pocket, which included his ID confirming it was indeed Duncan. His broken snowboard remained securely strapped to his back, serving as a poignant reminder of the tragic events that had unfolded years earlier. Upon retrieving McPherson's body from the frozen ice and snow, authorities observed signs of trauma. His left femur was shattered, his leg and forearm had been severed. Additionally, he had sustained two broken bones. Investigators concluded that these injuries were indicative of an encounter with machinery. Resort officials conducted an inquiry into McPherson's death, ultimately ruling it as accidental. They theorized that he had veered off trail during his snowboarding excursion, fallen into a crevasse, and succumbed to his injuries. Following the discovery of his body, various theories surrounding McPherson's death began to circulate. One theory revolves around the possibility of Duncan being abducted by the CIA as part of a secret operation stemming from his mention of CIA recruitment in 1989. However, the most likely cause of Duncan's death points towards a resort employee tasked with grooming snow on the glacier that evening accidentally colliding with Duncan. Weather reports and glacier photos from August 9, 1989 depict foggy conditions with intermittent drizzling rain. It is believed that the driver of the grooming machine, unable to see clearly in the fog, inadvertently struck Duncan, unaware of his presence on the slope until it was too late. The most likely scenario for the discovery of Duncan's body, severed limbs, and snowboarding gear in a shallow crevasse suggests that someone deliberately gathered these items and buried them there. If this were the case, all indications would point towards the operator of the grooming machine as the responsible party. If indeed this was the fate of Duncan, the lingering mystery revolves around why the operator of the grooming machine or their supervisor failed to promptly alert emergency services and report the accident. Was the operator neglecting safety protocols while operating the machine? Or could they have been under the influence of alcohol and hesitant to disclose the incident for fear of job repercussions? Whatever the reason, what remains certain is that Duncan McPherson died alone that day in August 1989. Now, more than three decades later, unanswered questions remain, and it seems unlikely the truth will ever be revealed. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in more videos from Beyond the Bench, please like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. See you in the next one.